dreaded kick With a sunshiny smile Heard the roar of a plane As it sailed through the sky To a playmate she cried With a bright twinkling eye My daddy rides that ship in the sky Along my way around the world Along my way around the world And to start with a creation story. What planet is that? Earth. That's Earth, that's right. You can see North America right there through the clouds. Uh-huh. And this creation tale comes from this book. Whiskers, Tails, and Wings, and it's a story about a sea turtle, to be exact, a leatherback sea turtle. And in their belief, the earth was created with the leatherback sea turtle. Now, the Seri people who made it up live way up there, close to the United States. That's where Mexico meets the United States, and there's a leatherback sea turtle. You can see how big he is right there. But the babies are teeny tiny. There they are going off into the water. Now in this story, it's going to talk about a sea snail. A sea snail is about this big. A trigger fish and a sea urchin, which some fish like to eat. Okay? And I'm going to make you a sea turtle as I go. In the very beginning, Hant Kai, the creator god, created the heavens and he created the waters. Up in the heavens he put the light of the sun in the daytime and at night he put the stars and the moon to light the sky. And down in the ocean he put all kinds of creatures. Now he liked that but something was missing. He wanted to create land for the animals and people to walk on. He thought to create land I need something to start it with. <coughs> so he thought down at the bottom of the ocean. There's sand. If I could just get some sand. Now, he was a god, but he couldn't, even he couldn't get down there. But he thought some of the sea creatures could, so he called them all together and he said, <clears throat> I am getting ready to create some land and I need somebody, one of you, to go down to the bottom of the ocean and bring me back some sand. It'll be a long and dangerous trip. Who would like to go? Well, after he said that, most of them scooted out to the outside and went home. They thought, oh, I don't want to do that. The ones who stayed, why, they were kind of boastful. They all started talking at once, saying, oh, I'm the best swimmer, or I'm the strongest, or I'm the fastest swimmer. And they were all talking at once. Out on the outskirts was Mosney, the leatherback sea turtle. And when they paused for a second, he said, <clears throat> I can make it down and bring you some sand back. <laughs> they all laughed, mostly the sea turtle. You're too clumsy, they said. You'd never make it down there. Well, Mosley felt bad. He kind of swam around to the outside and waited. Well, Hot Kai first picked the sea snail because the sea snail said he could bring the sand back in his shell. But the sea snail went down a little ways he went down a little ways and then he got past the other animals and he saw the great expanse of open water. He got scared. He scooted right back up. He went to a coral reef and into a cave because he was ashamed to go back. So he picked the triggerfish next because the triggerfish said he could keep the sand in his strong mouth. But he hadn't gone very far before he saw some juicy sea urchin. He never came back. Well, Han Kai kept thinking, nobody's coming back. He picked the seal. He didn't come back. He picked the shark. He didn't come back. Nobody was coming back. So 
he said to Mosni, he said, Mosni, could you go down? Okay. He said, go, Mosni, go. So Mosni thought, well, I'll go down and I will sing a little song to make me feel brave and strong when I go. And so that's what he did. He made up a song, and the song went like this. Go, Mosley, go. Go, Mosley, go. Go on down to the bottom of the sea. Bring the sands on back to me. Go, Mosley, go. You ready? Go, Mosley, go. Go, Mosley, go. Go on down to the bottom of the sea, bring the sand on back to me. Go, Mosley, go. He went under obstacles, he went over obstacles around him, he scooted around the big fish that might eat him, and finally he got on down to the sand. It was getting late in the day, and Han Kai and the creatures figured he wasn't coming back just like the others. But suddenly, out of the water, popped Mosney's head. Hooray! They shouted, Mosney's back. Can you shout that with me? Hooray! Mosney's back. Hunt Kai came over and he put his arm around Mosney. He said, good job, Mosney. Well done. But Mosney looked kind of sad. He said, Hunt Kai, I'm so sorry. When I went down there, I took plenty of sand on back, but as I swam, the water pulled almost all the sand out of my flippers. I've only got a few grains. That's okay, Mosley said Han Kai. With those few grains, I can make more. And so he took those grains and he spread them out and then he sang. of sand turned into a golden beach and then the golden beach grew to a great big desert and plants began to grow and animals came but the first animal that was allowed to walk on the land was Mosni the sea turtle and if you like that you can get a sea turtle for yourself so that's how the land was created and you know to this day the people feel like the leatherback sea turtle is very special if they go out fishing because they live next to the to the water if they see a sea turtle they won't hunt them and eat them they'll invite him on board with a song and if he comes on board they take him to land and they have a four-day celebration of how Mosley helped to start the world and then they put him back in the water. Well, talking about all the different plants that grew on the earth, I've got a song that I really love to sing that I need your help with, particularly on this, because it's a call and response song. It's called The Green Grass Grew All Around. Show me a tree like this. Here's the drum. A tree in the hole, make a circle. And the hole in the ground, and the green grass grew all around, all around, and the green grass grew all around. Got it? We do the motions in that second part, okay? And we're going to add them on. What is a folk tale? Okay? Mm -hmm. It's a story that's been passed down from generation to generation. There you go. Okay. The idea with a folk tale is how it's come along. There's all kinds of different folk tales, but the basic idea is it's been passed along from generation to generation. 
And the reason that there are all these folk tales around is that if you go back 100 or 150 years ago, all the things that we use, all the devices like TVs and movie theaters and smartphones and computers, record players and radios, none of that was here. If you wanted to hear a story, somebody had to tell you that story right there where you were sitting. And so that's what people would do in the evening was they would tend to sit around and sing old songs and tell old stories. And they had learned them from when they were kids. And they grew up and they told them to their kids. I wish I was a boy in the ground singing again. Oh, I wish I was a boy in the ground. Oh, you sing great piles of mold in the ground. I'd root that mountain down. And I wish I was a boy in the ground. Let to see if we can make up a verse to this song. All you need is an animal and a place that that animal is. Maybe what it does. Who's got an idea for an animal? Okay? Ooh. How about if I was a lion in the den? Hmm. What would I do? What would I do if I was a lion in the den? Hunt for food. I'll bring the zebra in. Oh. I what? Bring a zebra in. Well, the lion's got to eat, and that rhymes. He's got a good sense of rhyme. Let's do that one. I say go with that one. I wish I was a lion in the den. Oh, I wish I was a lion in the den. If I was a lion in the den, I'd bring a zebra in. These are fairy tales, and we may think of fairy tales in terms of, of movies that have been made by Walt Disney. But the original ones of these fairy tales are often very gritty. What tale is this? Rapunzel. Rapunzel. And that one is? Red Riding Hood. And what about that one? Sleeping Beauty. Most of these stories were collected by two brothers, Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm. Grimm. Rumpelstiltskin and Rump is a, is a chapter book based on that. It's wonderful reading. The Brothers Grimm, Hansel and Gretel, and A Tale Dark and Grimm based on that. These new novels are great. Whatever After, great reads for third graders. A, a brother and sister fall through a mirror into different fairy tales and they kind of mess things up when they arrive. And here's the one I want to tell you a little about. It's called The Six Swans. There was once a queen who had six sons. But what she wanted more than anything else in life was a daughter. And one day she was looking out the window and she saw a mother and a daughter walking along. And they looked so happy. They were talking to each other. They were laughing. Without thinking, really, she said to herself out loud, Oh, if I only had a daughter, I would give my six sons. Well, she should have thought about that. Because two seconds later, an old woman appeared in the room before her, and she said, That's a terrible thought. So you learn a lesson for him. I will grant your wish for you. I will give you a daughter, and on the day that your daughter is born, you will lose your six sons. And so she said that she wanted all of her sons gathered round her on the day that she gave birth. They all needed to be in the room with her and she wanted all the doors guarded. There was a sound of wind and the wind pushed open the window and came roaring through and she looked up to see six swans flying out that window. And she looked to where her sons had been, and they were gone. Well, in the old days, when you got these big old holes in your blue jeans, like he's got, 
And your mama said, uh-uh, no more wearing those blue jeans. She didn't just throw those blue jeans out. She took the blue jeans and she cut out squares and shapes out of the good part of the blue jeans. She did that with all the leftovers for the clothes. And then when she got a nice big pile, she'd say, it's time to make a patchwork quilt. And she'd sew those patches together and she'd make something new out of those old things. Now, here are the motions. I want you to put on a pair of glasses for your grandma, because you know our eyes get old. On my grandma's, and probably the first place you need a patch, is right here, because you're sitting on it all the time. So for patch, I want you to kind of hit your bottom. Patch work, and for quilt, I want you to pretend you've got a needle and you're sewing, okay? All my grandma's patchwork quilt. Let me see it. Squares and corners and silk. Then green and blue. And I love you on the grandma's patchwork quilt. Jamie O'Rourke was the laziest man in Ireland. He would do anything to keep from working. He would sit around all day, and his wife Eileen would say, Jamie O'Rourke, we'll have nothing to eat this winter if you don't get up and pick out the praties. But then one day, Eileen really did hurt her back, and she was laid up in bed, and Jamie had nobody to bring him his food. Well, you would think that Jamie O'Rourke would finally get up out of his bed, get up out of his chair or whatever, and go out and dig out the praties. But remember, Jamie O'Rourke was the laziest man in Ireland. To himself, he says, with Eileen sick in bed, there'll be no praties. With no praties, there'll be no food. With no food, I'll starve to death. There's no telling how soon death will be knocking at my door. I best go and confess my sins to Father O'Malley so that I can go to heaven when I die. And so in the middle of the night, Jamie O'Rourke got up out of bed and started down the hill to the church. Well, about halfway down the hill, he heard a little singing and tapping. He come up nice and close and he pulled back the ferns and there, sitting in the middle of the moonlight, a leprechaun. He was tap tap tapping on some fairy shoes. He was, and Jamie knew just what to do. He grabbed that little fellow by the coat tails and he held him up. Let me go! Let me go! cried the little feller. Not on your life, said Jamie. Not until you take me to your pot of gold. Oh, Mr. Mortal Man, he said. I'm just starting out in the trade, and I've only got one or two pieces of gold. He says, won't you take a wish instead? A wish, says Jamie, and what would I be wishing for? Me, whose wife is sick in bed and can't get up and dig out the praties and I'm about to starve to death. Well, says the leprechaun, you could wish for a magic potato seed, a giant potato seed. All you'd have to do is plant it and water it a couple of times, and you'd have the great biggest potato you've ever seen in your life, and you could eat on that potato all winter long. Here's the sign for grow. A seed under the ground, here's your hand, it's the surface, comes up. Gonna make this garden grow, turns into a flower, okay? Oh, inch by inch and row by row. Gonna make this garden grow. Get yourself a hoe in your hand. All I need is a rake and pole. Some more sign language. And a patch of fertile ground. What is that? Dirt. Next part starts to say inch by inch. And row by row, get a big sack of seeds. Hold it up with this hand. Reach it with your other hand. Get a handful and scatter it out. Please bless these seeds I sow. Please warm them from below till rain comes tumbling down. Okay? Now let's see if you can do your part with me playing the guitar. You ready? Inch by inch and row by row, flatter grow. Gonna make this garden go.
They saw a little house back there in the woods. Jack knocked on the door. An old woman opened that door. She had a long nose, she said. Yes, children, what is it? <laughs> Jack said, old woman, me and my sister Mary, we've been walking all day and we're too far away from home to get back. We were wondering, could we spend the night with you? Why, sure, she said. Come right on in. Well, they went in there, and don't you know that she already had that table set for three people? And she set them down, and they had a great big old supper. Oh, they had fried chicken. They had mashed potatoes with peas stuck down in the middle of it. They had a great big apple pie with ice cream on top. They had such a good meal. They filled up with that. And then the old woman took them up a ladder to a loft in back where they were going to sleep the night. Well, that old loft had an old feather bed. At the foot of that feather bed, there were three big old pumpkins. Well, Jack and Mary got into the bed, and Jack, he was sawing some Z's right off like that. He was tired. Mary was tired too, but she was also suspicious of that old woman. And she got up out of bed and she went to looking down and she could see into the kitchen and she could see that old woman had a big leather strop, kind of like the strap on my guitar, pulled back and in her other hand she had a big sharp knife she called Tommy Hawk. Well, Mary didn't want to find out what she was planning to do with that knife. She said, Jack, get out of that bed right now. That old woman's a witch and she's coming to get us. Well, Jack and Mary, they grabbed those three pumpkins, they stuck them into that bed, and it kind of looked like Jack and Mary in that feather bed. And then Jackie pulled out that first grain of magic corn. He threw it down on the ground, up sprung a ladder, and down went Jack and Mary. Down that ladder, she and they stopped that the window. Bus. She ran down that ladder, and she took off after Jack and Mary. Jack looked back, saw that old woman gaining on him. He pulled out the second grain of corn. He throwed it down and up sprung a big, tall pine tree. Jack and Mary started climbing up that pine tree. Got up to the top, overcame that woman. She took out Tommy Hawk, and Tommy Hawk turned into an ax, and she set into chopping. She sang, a chip off the old block, a chip off the new block, count me. Chip off the old block, a chip off the new block, chip off the old block, a chip off the new block. Well, Jack, he saw that, and he thought, oh my goodness. He called out, he called, Barney McCabe, doodly do help me. Sue boy, your master's calling you. Well, those words drifted on out of that forest, back to their house, and that milk turned red as blood. Jack's mother saw that. She let loose those three dogs, Barney McCabe, doodly do, and Sue boy. And they set in to run and calling out, faster, faster, coming all the time, faster, faster, coming all the time. And Jack could feel that tree start to crack and start to lean over. He could hear those dogs coming. And he reached in his pocket, grabbed the third grain of magic corn. And just as those dogs come up to that river too wide to cross, Jack threw down that magic grain of corn, up sprung a bridge. Hey, 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 sound and ride over the way all night long.